Let's cut to the chase. Ever since the 4.5 livestream, I've been seeing a ton of discourse on Chiori. There's the occasional I wish she were a Geo healer remarks, but then there's also the elephant in the room, which is comparing Chiori to Albedo, and rightfully so. Although they might share the same role as an off-field Geo DPS, Chiori's damage is a lot better than Albedo's thanks to the tools in her kit. For those like me who just want to pull Chiori because of her design and aesthetics, or for those who want to pull Chiori because they want an upgrade to their Geo teams, let's explore exactly what she needs to succeed as our new premier off-field Geo unit. Chiori's skill is her bread and butter. Tap her skill and she'll dash to nearby enemies to summon her doll Tamato to automatically attack enemies every 3.6 seconds. This doll has a 100% uptime with a 17 second duration and a 16 second cooldown. Beyond that, there's three important nuances to understand when using Chiori's skill. First, after tapping or holding her skill, you can either immediately normal attack afterwards to gain Geo Infusion, or tap her skill again to automatically swap her to the next character in your party. Most of the time, you'll want to activate her skill again to swap into the next character in your party because Chiori's Ascension Talent grants her skill up to two more hits of Geo damage when your party member's normal charge or plunge attack. This means you'll also want to pay attention to your party's order to ensure that Chiori is in the slot above the character you want to appear after her. For the second nuance, you can summon an additional Tamoto doll before or after using her skill by summoning a Geo Construct, which only includes Geo MC's skill and burst, Ito's Ushi, Albedo's Flower, Ningguang's Jade Screen, or Zhongli's Pillar. Additionally, whenever you create a Geo Construct, Chiori will also gain 20% Geo damage bonus for 20 seconds. Without Geo Constructs, Chiori's damage is already slightly better than Albedo's, but once you add in the extra doll and the Geo damage bonus, her DPS numbers get sizably better. And last but not least, the third nuance to understand with Chiori's skill is that it has split scaling. I know when some people hear split scaling, they'll immediately think the character is always worse, but as we've seen with characters like Nahida and Alhatham, you can actually have split scaling work in your favor. For Chiori, it doesn't necessarily take her to new heights like it does with Nahida or Alhatham, but it doesn't actually hurt her despite her skill and burst both scaling with attack and defense. Chiori's burst literally does nothing except for instant geo damage with a short cooldown and a low energy cost, and her skill also doesn't provide any buffs, just raw geo damage. What this means is that with split scaling, Chiori still wants to build defense as a main stat, but having triple or double defense main stats won't get you the returns you want due to the fact that her defense scalings are lower than they could be to balance out with the extra attack scaling that she gets. Instead of building full defense, Chiori values geo damage and crit stats even more when compared to other characters. We see this philosophy play out in both her weapon and artifact options, so let's start with weapons first since they are the more complicated part of the build. Your best free-to-play option and the best all-around option aside from her signature weapon is going to be the 3-star Harbinger of Dawn. Because a portion of her damage scaling is split into defense, the low base attack of this 3-star sword doesn't actually hurt Chiori and is a reason why split scaling can work in her favor. The massive crit value that you get from this weapon when above 90% HP gives her an option that pretty much anyone can obtain and is really easy to build around. The only downside of using this sword is that you cannot use her with Farina, who drains the HP of the entire party. Her signature weapon, Uraku Misugiri, is about 20-35% to stronger than Harbinger of Dawn, which is about the standard damage difference between a signature weapon and the best free-to-play option for most characters, but since she's not often used on field without C6, it's really not worth your primo gems. Another 5-star sword with a large crit stat like Primordial Jade Cutter ends up being about 5-7% better than Harbinger of Dawn, but I doubt that many players have a spare copy of this sword lying around on their account. As for other options, Cinnabar Spindle is an old event limited weapon for Albedo, and it also works fine on Teori given its passive is all about enhancing your skill damage based on your defense stat. In the case that you don't have a Geo Construct active, the passive will perfectly enhance every hit of her doll's attack with no cooldown issues. However, with a Geo Construct active, the presence of two dolls makes things a little bit awkward with the passive. When you use Chiori's skill when a Geo Construct is already on the field, the two dolls will attack in quick succession, resulting in the second doll attacking before Cinnabar's passive comes off cooldown. If you summon a Geo Construct after using Chiori's skill, the two dolls will have their hits more spread out, but depending on your timings, it is not a 100% guarantee that the hits from both dolls will benefit from Cinnabar's passive. 
The only way I could get it to work for my testing was by timing your Geo Construct so that both dolls end up attacking at the same time and benefit from the 0.1 second window for buffing skill damage mentioned in the Cinnabar passive before the buff is cleared. But regardless of that, even the damage calcs with the assumption that the skill enhancement happens every other hit are still impressive. In teams without a Geo Construct or in teams where you can't sync the two dolls to the Cinnabar's 1.5 second passive cooldown, this weapon has about the same damage level as Harbinger of Dawn. If you can get the two dolls to account for a Cinnabar's 1.5 second passive cooldown, it is a notable difference and Cinnabar rises to about the same level as Primordial Jade Cutter. Other viable swords include Festering Desire, Wolf's Fang, or Finale of the Deep, but Festering is not so accessible anymore like Cinnabar Spindle, and the other options released with Fontaine are still outperformed by Harbinger of Dawn. For artifacts, Chiodi keeps it simple for you. You can choose between the 4-set Golden Troop and the 4-set Husk of Opulent Dreams, whichever one has the better substat value. If all substats are equal, then Golden Troop is slightly better than Husk of Opulent Dreams because it does not have to deal with the split scaling that we discussed earlier, and it also resides in the more resin efficient domain. Marisuse Hunter is a very relevant artifact set with the recently released DPS characters like Gaming, Nouvellet, and Riesli. Husk of Opulent Dreams' defense and geo damage bonus from its 4 set also benefit Chiodi's burst, unlike Golden Troop's set bonus, so it is able to reach the same DPS level as Golden Troop in cases where you do use Chiodi's burst every rotation. However, farming Husk means you will be farming a less resin efficient domain with Ocean Hued Clam, which really only shines with Kokomi and to a lesser extent Baiju and Barbara. As for artifact stats, defense in the sands, geo damage bonus in the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage in the circlet is your standard build. Because Chiodi's burst doesn't deal crazy damage and it doesn't have a high energy cost, you really don't need to get copious amounts of energy recharged with substats like most other characters. Instead, prioritize crit stats the highest and then defense and attack percent afterwards. Having the occasional energy recharge substat here and there is always nice, but like Albedo, you won't need to go anywhere beyond 120-130% to energy recharge for most teams. With the right build, it's now time to figure out who to pair with Chiodi. I'm sure when players think of where Chiodi would be good, many think of Mono Geo first. And to that I say, yes, she's especially good with Ito. Chiori can replace Albedo and create the trio of Ito, Goro, and Chiori, which is now your highest DPS mono Geo core. Because Ito's Ushi counts as a Geo construct, you don't even need to run a fourth Geo to activate Chiori's bonuses. Unfortunately, Chiori's skill does not snapshot the buffs provided by Goro, but thanks to Ito activating Chiori's extra effects, she is able to make this trio the strongest mono Geo core, even when accounting for Albedo's ability to take advantage of Goro's buffs off field. So, this interaction between Ushi and Chiori means you can opt for survivability options or pure damage in the final slot. Zhongli, Leila, and Kukishinobu are great for survivability and holding the 4 set Tenacity of the Millilith for a 20% attack buff, while Diona or Bennett can hold the 4 set Noblesse Oblige for that same 20% attack buff. Fischl, Yolan, and Xingqiu are your best pure damage options to pair with Ito if you feel like you can get away without survivability in the final slot. If you don't have Ito and want to replace him with either Ningguang or Noel as your Geo DPS, you most definitely can. Ningguang's Jade Screen counts as a Geo Construct, so with her as the main DPS, there are no issues, but unfortunately, Noelle does not have a Geo Construct. That means in order to get the maximum value out of using Chiori over Albedo in a Noelle team, you're going to have to pigeonhole yourself into using either Zhongli, Geo MC, or Ningguang in the final slot, instead of the diverse options I mentioned before. However, a team that doesn't need to have a Geo Construct for Chiori is a Navia team. Usually in Navia teams, you'll have one Geo character to pair with her for the extra Geo energy and the Geo resonance. Even without a Geo construct, Chiori's damage can outperform Albedo's and her 3.6 second attack interval is slightly faster than Albedo's 4 second interval for creating crystallized shields since only every other hit of Albedo's transient blossoms can apply the Geo element. The final two slots carry two non-Geo characters to apply as much elemental aura as possible to maximize your crystallized shield reaction. The easiest way to approach these final slots is to form another duo of the same element, with one slot being an off-field DPS and the other slot being a healer. For Hydro, pick either Farina, Xingqiu, or Yolan as your off-field DPS and then Barbara or Kokomi for your healer. For Pyro, the Bennett and Shangling duo is by far your best option and even one of Navia's best teams overall. 
For Cryo, Rosaria is the core off-field damage dealer with her crit rate buff on her burst, with plenty of survivability and Cryo energy supports ranging from Diona and Layla for shields to Charlotte or Mika for pure healing. And finally, Electro usually takes Fischl, Yaimiko, Beto, or Lisa for Electro DPS with either Kuki or Dory for healing. Fischl in particular is one of Navia's best teammates because she does generate a ton of energy and has cooldowns that work in line with Navia's rotation. Although duo elements are the easiest way to approach Navia's teammates, you do not have to limit yourself to these combos that I just mentioned either. Just make sure that you have ample elemental application for crystallized shields. For example, Fischl and Bennett work fantastic together since Fischl has a lot of electro application by herself and she can snapshot Bennett's attack buffs. Meanwhile, Bennett doesn't really have much pyro application to create overload that could potentially remove the electro element from enemies, and both Navia and Fischl will greatly benefit from Bennett's attack buff. Overall, Navia teams are surprisingly flexible with Chiori and don't even require a Geo construct to function better than the previous teams with Albedo. However, one point to note is that with C1, your Navia teams can get a huge boost because C1 allows for Chiori to get all of her kit's bonuses without the presence of a Geo Construct. Is this constellation a must-get though? Absolutely not. While it is a great upgrade for Navia teams, remember that this is practically useless in other teams that already have a Geo Construct. In fact, people may overlook the other part of this constellation that increases the range of her dolls by 50%, which is actually a practical addition to her kit since her dolls are not repositionable like Fischl's Oz. Even after C1, her constellations just add more damage to her kit aside from C6, so there's really nothing to chase in terms of constellations. Players that do have Navia can heavily consider getting C1, but I really want to emphasize the point that even a C0 Harbinger of Dawn or Cinnabar Spindle Chiori can do your Navia teams justice, so don't feel compelled to go beyond getting your first copy of Chiori. We have some banger reruns with Nouvellet and Kazuha this patch, as well as some exciting new characters like Chlorin, Seguin, and the recently drip market Arlecchino that appear in the Fontaine story that you can save your leftover primos for. With how simple Chiori is, you can even slot her in with your favorite three character core as the final unit if you have no idea who else to run. She may not be your best choice for that final slot outside of Navia or Mono Geo teams, but she will definitely hold her own by at least dealing decent damage. But other than that, that's all I have time for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Chiori guide, and most importantly, I hope this guide was helpful for building the perfect Chiori for your account. Other than that, it's the same as always. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.